Hello from wherever you are, and welcome to Let's Play Games. I'm John McFarland, Adult Services Librarian for National Public Libraries, and I hope you'll join me in learning or rediscovering some of the more common and uncommon games out there. Today, I am going to go through one of the more simple games. It's direct, it's entirely chance-based, but it is certainly thrilling and exciting when the cards go your way. This is war. Let's get stuck in. So, war is a fairly easy way in which to learn about card rank. What I mean is the different levels of each card. So, we're using the French deck, we're going in order of high to low. So, in most card games, it's important to determine which card is high and which card is low. Well, in this case, Ace, which is normally our one card, is going to be our high card, which means it's over here. And it functions almost like a court card in its own way, which I'll get to in a second. But first, we have to go through the rest of the pips. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then the rest of our cards, jack, queen, and king. So this helps you learn a little bit of the card rank here. So we have it in our varying suits of, as you can tell here, clubs, spades, diamonds, and hearts. And this is just going to be basically a split deck, one on one, but there are some fun aspects to it. But as always, as I love doing on this series, is talking about shuffling and the importance of shuffling, because otherwise this game gets kind of boring. But what you can do is you can either do it through washing and just kind of mixing it around like this, but note, it takes some time and then you've got to reorganize it and then stack it properly, which can be a little tedious, as you can tell. But this is one way of shuffling. You also have just taking a couple cards and mixing them up like this. It does add some element of randomness to it, but it at least gets it started, but you'll have cards fall out all the time like that. But the other way, and one of the more common ways you'll see people shuffle is by splitting or cutting the deck, then making a little small diagonal gap here and using your thumb to let some of the cards go at a time. Then it's a little easier to go ahead and pick these cards back up, cut the deck again, and then repeat the process until you feel properly satisfied that all of the cards are mixed in thoroughly. So now what this involves is, I'm just gonna throw this in like in the middle. Each player is gonna start with half the deck. So let's go ahead and do that here. And then you're gonna have one card face up and the high card wins. So yes, technically speaking from the get go, whoop, since I lost track, we're gonna treat that as bonus shuffling. We are determining right from the get go which person actually is winning. But it's more at this point, the mystery of finding out so unless you got really good at shuffling and are able to shuffle for, you know, magic tricks, you're probably not at this point knowing who the winner is. You have your half, I have my half, and we'll go through this. So what's gonna happen is the higher card wins and you're gonna keep it separate, but the winner, and we'll just do it like this, so we'll just turn over. Nine, so I win the first one. Win the second one. You win that one. And statistically speaking, odds eventually even out to where, aside from, you know, random chance, 
you are going to more often than not have a pretty even stack. So this is one of those games that it doesn't take a lot of thinking to do. And notice that it was a five and a three there. So it can, as long as you keep this going, this game goes in a fairly fast paced way. The fun part that we're looking for is eventually we will have matching suits for something. But the goal here is to eventually take all of your opponent's cards. And it's one of those, as long as I can keep winning on some of these, it's not too bad. Notice how in general, we still got to this even stack and they're roughly equivalent piles. Now, it varies on how some people play it, but what I like doing is I like, once you get to the bottom, shuffling, so that way you can throw in a little more variance, uh, because otherwise it ends up being kind of a, a not flowy game. So we'll do that. I think I'm a little further ahead for now. But this is one of those games that happens over time. And notice I'm not focusing too hard on the outcome because you can tell fairly quickly who has won versus who hasn't. So we'll put this like side to side. So I'm ahead by maybe like two pairs. So we'll go again. Still waiting for a tie, and I'm wanting it to be happening naturally. But alas, this is one of those times where it does not necessarily become easy. But if we don't get one here soon, I will just we'll manifest uh, in a slightly different, oh, manifest. And here we go. So this is now what we call a war. So these cards, we'll put them to the side for the moment. So what you're going to do is more cards will now be at stake. So what you're going to have is each player will do one, two, three, and the fourth card is what matters. And then the winner gets all 10 cards. So you actually don't even know what you lose. Not the greatest cards to lose. And what did I save? Eh. But I get all of these cards. Now notice for this, we're gonna keep playing and we actually got two wars in a row, not bad. So in theory, you could gain some of these back, which you do. So uh, you save one of your kings, another 10, not bad. And then, what do I lose? Nine, ah, lost an ace. You don't wanna lose aces. So then, you will, after that, shuffle yours up. So you gained a couple back, but this is where the game goes back and forth and back and forth until you, one side loses all of their cards. So let's go ahead and shuffle up here. There are some strong cards here, so. Winning is more than still possible. It's just more luck, advantage, and a way to pass the time. Because also it see like losing a two is not bad. Getting a five is not bad. Losing a two here, like if you lose, <clears throat> losing a jack is not as good. And you can kind of think of what you're gaining versus what you're losing. So I lost some fours, some fives, you know, one good card. But as the tide eventually turns, you will discover that this game goes fairly into a length of time, but allows you to have some fun with it be able to just 
focus on what cards are being gained, lost, and explored in this particular war. Notice here, I'm just continuing to be able to travel through. And notice through, let's see, about three or four draws there. These, this game is, as far as it were, rather simplistic to learn, but it helps you figure out rank. It helps you determine how you want to pass the time. Let's see, after this, I've got Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. You start with twenty-six. After all of that, you're still only down four cards. It's not that uneven right now. So it's a fun way to pass the time, and I wanted to just show the simple rules of war. That is all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to join me next time where I cover yet another card or board game and we go into varying levels of complexity and try and demystify all of these varying different games, different types, in different ways. See you next time.